All right, man, peace. So LeBron James' is very climactic three-point shot to defeat the Indiana Pacers in Game 5 caused many in the liberal sports media to once again conjure up the old debate of whether or not LeBron James is as clutch as Michael Jordan. Now, normally, the debate centers around overall career achievements that are based in stats. But due to the fact that LeBron James has shown that, at least according to percentages and statistics, he has been able to convert in clutch moments on a par with Michael Jordan in the playoffs. This has precipitated another debate centering around those two all-time greats. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. On LeBron James, last night, LeBron hit his fourth career game-winning buzzer beater in the postseason. According to the numbers, that is one more than Michael Jordan had in his postseason career. In fact, looking at go-ahead shots in the final five seconds of the fourth quarter and overtime in their postseason careers, LeBron's numbers, they are as good or better than Jordan in all of these categories. Now, I mentioned this before the show when we were getting ready, and both y'all almost jumped the desk. So here we go. We are on TV. You can have this conversation in front of everyone. How do you feel about this? Well, let me say this first before Scottie Pippen and Tracy McGrady speak because we already know what they're going to say. Scottie Pippen was a former teammate of Michael Jordan's and Tracy McGrady grew up in the same era as me. So he understands the context of the conversation, the context of the debate between Michael Jordan and LeBron James because he's seen the both of them play in their championship years. And he understands that clutch just cannot be encapsulated in the last five seconds of the game. It oftentimes is the decision that you make over the course of the game, especially in the fourth quarter of games. And clutch oftentimes is being able to make that big jump shot with six minutes left to put your team up by nine points when your opponent has been keeping it close and putting them out of reach, which oftentimes is what happened with Jordan and the Bulls, which is why he won six championships. I didn't know they'd keep us that playing close games <laughs> thank you sir like what really are you what really are you saying uh, a lot of those stats are predicated on lebron james's teams and their inability to close teams out that's my point clutch many times is can you make that jump shot can you convert that play with seven minutes left to extend the lead so that it won't be close down the stretch <laughs> <laughs> like wow you go ahead down to this right? well um I'm not saying LeBron isn't clutch. I, I just LeBron James's clutchness is underrated. Kobe Bryant's clutchness is overrated. I'll leave it at that. Now, would I want LeBron James taking a jump shot with five, with five seconds left and his team by two more than I would Kobe Bryant taking a jump shot with five seconds left and his team down by two or one or what have you? Uh, not necessarily, but I think that the decision-making process would be very close. As we all know, Kobe Bryant has a very strong, a very potent cult of personality. If you let many of his fans tell you Kobe was better than Michael Jordan, he was Michael Jordan with a three-point shot. These are all things that I've heard in the past. And many people forget that coming off of the LA Lakers victory over the Boston Celtics in the 2010 Finals, many of the conversations that the media is having today comparing LeBron James and Michael Jordan, they were having back in the 2010-2011 season, with Kobe and Michael Jordan when Kobe was going for his sixth ring. Many were saying that Kobe is as good as or better than Jordan was because he's going for his sixth ring and he has many years left. That's what I mean when I say father time catches up with you very quickly. When the LA Lakers lost in the 2011 playoffs to the Dallas Mavericks and got swept, that ended an era. That brought in, that ushered in the era of ball movement. Prior to that, you had the hero ball era which stretched all the way Really from 19, I would say, 93 all the way to 2011. Now, if we want to say the hero ball ever started around 1991 when Jordan won his first championship, you could say that. But I still think that there was a lot more ball movement in the early 90s. When you look up the overall scoring of the league in the early 90s, it was very close to today, really commensurate with today. Uh, once again, the defense in the early 90s is overrated. The defense in the late 80s was overrated. There, was, there were very high offensive ratings in that era. It's just that the Pistons changed the paradigm for how to win, and it transferred over to the New York Knicks. The Chicago Bulls had the overall best defense in the NBA in the early 90s, but the scoring was still relatively good. 
It wasn't until the mid-90s where you had the hero ball era ushered in where you saw the overall team output of scoring drop down. When the LA Lakers lost to the Dallas Mavericks in 2011, that ushered in the ball movement era that we have today. Point being is this, uh, Kobe Bryant is not as clutch as they give him credit for and LeBron is not as unclutch as they give him blame for. Neither one of them are as clutch as Jordan though. I just think there are guys I could put ahead of LeBron when it comes to clutch. Um, Larry Bird. Michael Jordan, obviously the number one guy, but I even go as Reggie Miller. I go. That's a great one. Reggie Miller, definitely. I go Paul Pierce, clutch. Jo That's close. Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson was extremely cut. Yeah, Joe Johnson, he, he's a great clutch shooter. Clutch, clutch. The reason being is LeBron first thought is I'm gonna make the right basketball play. Right. Right. That, it's probably that, like it is part of being clutch, but yes. To well, your point about his, that you wouldn't say he's not. Right. Uh no. Quote unquote making the right basketball play, that's not really part of being clutch. Being clutch is I'm going to make the shot when my team make, needs me to make the shot in the closing moments because that is the definition of this debate. Now, if you want to redefine clutch as making the right play at the right time, then we have to take away those stats that you yourself put on the screen of who's shooting a better percentage with less than five seconds left because you made it about shooting. So don't tell me that now clutch is about making the right basketball play. We're, we're talking about making the sh shot. shot. Thank you, Tracy. Shot. And I think LeBron's mentality is, I'm going to make the right basketball play, whereas those guys, even Kobe, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Kobe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Excuse us, Kobe. Oh, my God, please. But these guys are fixated on, I'm, I'm taking a shot, not right. looking to pass. Like, they're looking to make that shot. They're not looking to pass. Okay, but here's the thing, and, and by the way, I am still, and I get on TV all the time and say, to me, Michael Jordan is still the best basketball player that ever lived, so I'm not making... Well, he's the best basketball player that you saw. Once again, I never saw Will Chamberlain, Oscar Robertson, Jerry West, Bill Russell. I didn't see those players play. The reason why I state that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time, and definitely the best player that I have ever seen, but the reason why I make the case that he's the greatest player of all time is because... He was the player who was able to transform the overall paradigm of the NBA to being a multiple world champion without a dominant big man. When all before him, every other multiple time champion had a dominant big man or a dominant front court. Because the overall credo of the NBA at that time, the formula for winning in the NBA prior to Jordan was that you needed to work from the inside out and that your wing could be as great as you wanted him to be but he was not going to result in championships i.e jerry west i.e oscar robertson who were the two best wings in league history prior to jordan uh, who had never won anything until they were, were teamed up with a great big man you know, he was the first guy and i always mention isaiah thomas won multiple world championships and did not have a dominant big man but he did have a great front court jordan was the first player in league history to win that many titles and have a lot of bums in the front court I mean, Horace Grant, Dennis Rodman, Scottie Pippen were very good to borderline great. But Dennis Rodman was one dimensional in regards to not having any offensive game whatsoever. He was a great rebounder. And by the time he was on the Bulls, he was a good defender. He was no longer the defender that he was with the, with the Detroit Pistons or the San Antonio Spurs. Scottie Pippen is one of the top five greatest defenders in NBA history, period. And most, and most probably the greatest defensive small forward in NBA history. Horace Grant was a very serviceable power forward who was a great offensive rebounder and a, a great goal defender. That's what Horace Grant was. But he was also known for coming up very small in the clutch. Jordan did not play with a dominant front court mate. Bill Cartwright was a cast off who fit in well with the Bulls because he was very good defensively and he knew how to guard Patrick Ewing very well. Luke Longley, they were able to build up. He himself was also cast off. The argument, like, oh, it's suddenly LeBron. Now, I think LeBron's still going, so we'll see. I don't think this we're is over. We're not saying again. that LeBron... But in this particular argument... I'm not saying he's not The only thing yet. I want to point out, y'all talk about Kobe, all these guys. Those guys love to shoot those shots. What? Thank you. Their percentages on making those shots are not quite I, as good as you might remember. Thank you. That's one thing I will agree with. 
this lady here in regards to what she's stating about Kobe Bryant. That's why I stated already Kobe Bryant is not as clutch as many of his fanboys like to make him out to be. He just always took the shot. Very rarely did he make them in comparison to how many he took. Now, if you take enough, if you take as many as he took, you're going to make some. At least I'd hope. Nothing with LeBron <laughs> at all. He is clutch. But, but the numbers say that he has say, done it more often than Jordan. Yes. So how do you that just say that? Well, here's the problem with a lot of the, the, the clutch LeBron stats. Out of the six shots that he's made with five seconds left, like two or three of them were layups. Okay. He made a layup against the Pacers. He made a layup against the Washington Wizards. And he made another layup as well. Like three out of those six shots are layups. I mean, I don't count those. And he's been in a lot of close games. Yeah, that's not a, 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 a <laughs> something that you should be appraising him for being in close games. I, I like winning games by team. I don't like. Thank you, Scotty. Like clutch games. So, but hey, in, in, in saying what Tracy is saying is that LeBron is not the guy that wants to take that last shot. That's not how he plays the game. We see it last night. But right he's way. done it more than the other guy on that side of your screen, and his percentage of making it is now it's just a hair, but it is he's higher. He's probably going to see it a lot more if he keeps playing. I mean, he's going <laughs> to eat up every stat there is in yes, the book. But this isn't just but a volume stat. It is more right now a comparable right? Exactly. Or, or, but, but the per- shooting percentage, again. The real argument is that out of those six shots, at least two, that I know offhand were layups. I think three of them were layups. Not against LeBron. Once again, LeBron is underrated as a clutch shooter because he's much more clutch than people give him credit for. He went through that little period from around 08 to 2011 where he he seriously seemed to struggle mentally in, in the clutch spot. A lot of it was due to him listening to Skip Bayless. I definitely believe that Skip Bayless's constant attacks on LeBron did wear him down and got him thinking about whether or not he was the player that he thought he was. These players, they do watch these sport debate shows where oftentimes they get lambasted and it can't get into their head if they're not careful. I am not, this is not the grounds to say that LeBron is better than Michael Jordan because it's just one category. And we're not saying that he's not clutch. I'm just saying that his first thought is, I'm going to make the right basketball play and that's what... He, he almost did it last night. I know well, that, yes. So, like, those guys are not doing that. Right, right. The game is on the line. It's all true. But, again, one of the things we remember Michael for, and you from court yeah. side, court on the court, you from three feet away, are those amazing shots, right? I mean, right. Ty Lue said last night at the end of the press conference, and I don't know how much of TV caught it because it was, like, as he was standing up, and yeah. so you had to keep rolling the tape. He goes, that looks like Jordan shot over Elo. That felt like the same thing to me. Uh, no, not really. Jordan's shot over Elo was just beyond the free throw line. LeBron's shot was a three pointer. Uh, you know, once you start Who making all those. Lewis, that LeBron's coach. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, those moments. Yes, those truly. Michael it, Jordan moments. It, it those truly are. was one of those moments where you said that was real Jordan like. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say he's the GOAT, but <laughs> I will say he was clutch. Yeah, absolutely. And what it feels like to be in those moments. I mean, can you just, I, we're, we're all well, looking at the reaction afterward. That Miles Turner face was amazing. But to be on the court for one of those moments, what does it feel like? It's a great feeling. I mean, I would love to know what it feels like. <laughs> That's a big shot. Maybe you should let Tracy answer that. Because, uh, he was in that situation a few times. At least Scotty admits that he was not a clutch shooter because he was not. As great as Scotty Pippen was overall as a player, you did not want the basketball in his hands in clutch moments. He might have made one or two clutch shots in his entire career. And he was more known for missing clutch free throws than he was anything else. If you got Scottie Pippen on the free throw line in a big moment, he was going to miss. I will never forget Game 4 in 1998 Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers. This dude went to the free throw line and missed two free throws that left the door open for the Indiana Pacers to come back and eventually win that game when Reggie Miller pushed off on Jordan and hit a, and hit a game-winning three-pointer. Where right after that, Jordan came down and flung up a three, running left, and the ball bounced off the backboard and almost went in. You know what was ironic about that game, or very interesting about that game? Jordan also got cut over his left eye, the same way that LeBron just did in this past game six against the Pacers as well. Uh, but, you know. The difference was that when Jordan got cut over his left eye, he didn't go down on his hands and knees and 
and, and uh, act like he got hit with a right hand from Tommy Hearns. You know, he just went to the sideline and, and got stitched up and then put the bandage over his left eye and came back in the game. I played with the GOAT, so yeah. You know, it's a great shot. feeling when that shot is made. I mean, it just, no matter it, what. It takes you back to your childhood. That's what LeBron said. He it, said no, it, it does. Like it putting your balled up socks, putting in your draft It game. takes you back to your childhood and you relive those moments. Except with 20,000 people screaming for Absolutely. you. So it's, it's not bad. I don't know. A guy who we expect. But anyway, that's it on that topic. They will always fish for topics in regards to LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. And it's understandable. LeBron has built up a strong enough resume where it can be a conversation, but it's never going to be a serious debate, at least not for people who saw both players play. But anyway, peace.